Who are we going to start with, Jesse? Who have you put at the front? So, yeah, I thought I'd just run through, uh, I think there's about 20 photos in total, and I was just going to run through. There we go. Starting off with um, a photo by Greg Greg um, Cezetso from, from Melbourne, who came up for the workshop. And um, one of the things that you know, I always start off talking about when I present my own work in the workshops is developing confidence. And often it's... Um, it's uh, it's not something that you know everyone is sort of comfortable with shooting on the streets. So building up that confidence is is really um, key and can take time. And you know I always tell people to get out to you know busy spots where there's crowds, um, other people with cameras, so that you don't feel um, awkward, which can can sometimes be the case. So. Uh, Greg was a photographer that I think from memory had mainly shot landscape stuff and, and, and other, other sort of like close up, you know, macro work. So the street was new to him. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is a photo that he took on the, at the end of the first day when we were over in Manly. And I thought it would just be a great sort of starting picture to show, you know, what's sort of possible. Like this is a, a really beautiful image. Um, the late afternoon sun, the you know the the backlight, the deep shadows, the moment. There's a lot going on in it. I thought I thought it was a really good way to start off and 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 kind of you know show us what what's sort of possible. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think Greg was Greg was pretty happy with this one. I think that we've got some more of his work later on in the presentation, which I'll show, which is a bit different to this. But um, yeah, just a really really great street picture. And I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can right. see that his confidence, even even the confidence to be sort of trying to take these sort of photos. Um, exactly. Now. You know, often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, it's sort of overcoming those fears, and 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 often that's that's um that's you know a big hurdle when when you're out there on the street when you're starting off is to sort of tell yourself you're not doing anything wrong. You know, I'm standing on this street corner. I'm just yes, that's right. As it, yeah. as it yeah. passes by, and I'm allowed to do it. And you know, here's a really good example of it. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the one of the things that um, struck me about this picture was that it's not at all obvious that you can take a picture like that with straight into the light with reflections off the pavement and go for that super high contrast. Especially if you're coming from a landscape photography background, it's kind of breaking a lot of rules as such but rules, then once yeah. you start seeing those splashes yeah. of light and those converging yeah. shadows and the rim lit people you can't unsee it and it's for, for a few people i know they've said this to me it's been a bit of an epiphany um yeah. and really that realization that deep pools of shadow sorry, bright pools of light and deep shadows and into the sun is is one of many very strong compositional techniques and dramatic techniques that that's just not at yeah. all obvious until someone points it out. So um, yeah, yeah, this is a great yeah. example of that. Yeah, and also just the the fact that you know there's some of the I think it's the um, the traffic light pole is you know on a bit of an angle and you know there's no with this sort of work I think um, you know we sort of we don't worry about those sorts of things. It's you know it's more about capturing the moment and um, yeah. as Gary Winogrand the legendary street photographer you look at you know most of his work there's crooked horizon lines and yeah, yeah. you know verticals that are out it's it's yeah. it's not about that the it's words. not about it's that. more about yeah yeah, yeah just, do, you, just, uh, do you know what camera know. Greg was using for this um from memory I think Greg had a he put me on the spot there but um <laughs> I remember it, it might have been it might have been a Q2 from memory, mm. Mm. I'm sure it's Greg's there. And might, real, might jump into the comments and um, yeah, yeah. I think um, I'm from memory. It was a Q2, but if yeah. Greg's listening, and he could maybe uh, tell us in the sure in the uh, in the comments. Joined in or not? Let me just see if I can find any Greg. Q2. In there. Someone's written uh, Q2. Uh, Catherine, oh, Catherine, oh, Catherine, yeah, Greg Catherine remembers. Greg Jacobs. We've only got we've got three Gregs, but <laughs> he's not here. Okay. So yeah, uh, well, we'll go with Q2. <laughs> Go with cute. I think it looks like a 28 mil shot, so that yeah. would be close. Okay. Um, next one. So well done, Greg. Oh, we've also put the Instagram handles down at the bottom if anybody's interested in following these uh, people's work, the ladies and gentlemen, um, because um, some are very active on Instagram, and it's a great way to see the work and see other people's work, and you know, and, and just get a sense of what's out there. Um, right, next one would be, this is, I love this one, this is really cool. 
Yeah, this is uh, taken by um, Dan Shaw from Emory. And Dan was, um, I think Dan traveled up from Melbourne for the workshop as well. And um, yeah, so once again, um, just touching on the what I talked about before about building up mm. the confidence. This is this is mm. one of those sort of pictures that really shows that. And um, yeah, I think absolutely. it was taken early on, early on the first day, after uh, maybe after lunch. I think we'd had a nice lunch and and whatnot, and then gone and shot around Circular Quay. Where there are a lot of I think a fair few people around and a lot of builders and construction workers. So even um, what I really liked about this photo was the the way Dan sort of moved into the scene, which is yeah. is often the challenge. You know, you, you see a yeah. moment like this and you often see it from a distance. You see the two men sitting there and yeah. you think, there's yeah. a picture. And how do you move into their, their space without yeah. disrupting it? And I think Dan's done that really well, that, you know, there's no eye contact from either of the guys. Mm. He's, uh, he's moved in, he's probably maybe sat on one of these, uh, these bollards and, um, you know, maybe just, you know, gone about his thing and taken a few other shots of uh, circular key and then just framed this up and, and yep. was able to capture it. So, um, yeah, I really like this picture. And I, anyone that knows my work um, knows that I'm a bit of a sucker for photos of workers in high vis. So this, um, I thought this was yeah, a good thing. one to put in. <laughs> The thing that struck me about this image, which I think is not only is the approach very important, as you say, and it's a difficult thing to do, but it's also extremely deliberate. Um, I, I love the way the picture is divided into clear halves. Um, Dan must have been sitting precisely in line with this seam yeah, here. Definitely. And then you've got the section edge and this. So you've got, and it's 50-50, give or take, uh, close enough yeah. for us. And that's clearly a deliberate move. And it really, really lifts from an interesting moment of colour to a carefully constructed image, which includes the reality of the street image. And that's where you start to get from the snapshot to the really yeah. well seen and captured image, I would, I would say. Yeah, and that's something I, I really touch on when I present my own work to the group. I often, um, I show, I've got like a presentation, which I'm sure some of you have seen and, um, one of the things I really talk about is when you do come across a moment or a scene that allows it to really um, exhaust all photographic mm. opportunities and sort of move in and, and, and don't just think, take the first photo and think you've, you've got it. Mm. If, the, um, if the scene allows you to, to shoot more, it's, it's always good to, you know, like what Dan's done here is, you know, he's probably sat down, like you said, and, you mm. know, he's got his horizon line straight, he's framed it up, it's very deliberate and, you know the results uh what we're looking at so yeah really good really good first up shot and also um just going back to the confidence thing it's it's sort of taking people out of their comfort zones which um yeah i think is really important with this sort of work i think you know i think with um going to a place like circular key like we do in sydney or um flinders street station in melbourne it's always um they're always really good locations for for people to kind of really throw themselves into this um, this shooting approach. Mm. It's interesting because there's two ways of looking at that sort of location, Circular Key, because it, it's a very busy place. On one hand, you've got an enormous amount of opportunity and you're kind of hidden a little bit amongst all the hustle and bustle. But then again, the opportunities are so many and varied, it can be overwhelming. Whereas when there's only a few people around and you find something really interesting, you stand out like a sore thumb because you're the only other person there. So it yeah, can work both yeah. ways, I would, I would imagine. No, you're completely right. And that's, um, yeah, there's a good mix of, of the, the, I suppose, the touristy type spots there. But then there's also yeah. this sort of, and I often like those photos that are a, a shot in a, a location that is quite well known, but often yeah. away from the... Um, you know the what we see every day. The um, yeah, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the shots the hustle, of the hustle. Yeah. All right. So good one, Dan. Very good. Yeah. All right. Next one. I think that was shot with a M10 as well, from memory. Okay. Um, All right. Yes. Yeah. So if, yeah. if you can remember what they were shot with, I, I know people yeah. will like to know. It, it does help with them working things out. This yeah. is terrific as well. This is John yeah, Henderson. Yeah. So this is. Um, John Henderson, who's done a couple of the workshops with me up in Sydney. I think he actually did one in Melbourne with me and then the mm -hmm. Sydney one. This was, I don't know, he was shooting with an SL2 with uh -huh. the, I think he had the 24 to 90. And um, mm -hmm. so this was taken on the second day. We um, we always go out to Cabramatta. We sort of mix mm -hmm. it up a bit and 
go out to Cabramatta for the morning and then have a um, a nice lunch out there. And this was there's a group of guys that you know sit in the um, in the square playing you know this game of crackers I think it's called. And I think um, what I really I mean what really what what I really like about this photo in particular is just that um, that nice moment that that he's been mm. able to capture, but also the color. I think there's just yes. that, that really nice warmth to it. There's that yeah. reflection and it's a spot that you know I've, I've stood there a few times over the last couple of years and, and looked for different angles on how it could work and um, when John came back with this one it was a really um, different take on it uh, mm. the the a lot of the the other shots that I've, I've seen from other people who have shot there on the workshops have been um, you know a bit more sort of journalistic a bit more um, mm. photojournalistic I should say and you know had you know, multiple people in the scene, but I think what what's really working about this is that John's just focused in on this on this this one one guy, mm. and I think it just yeah it works really well. Yeah, well, I think one of the things that I, I remember being drummed into me donkey's years ago in photography was the idea of simplify, you know, eliminate and yeah, get rid of all the things that aren't helping the picture, which is obviously a very difficult thing to do. I think Van Gogh said it's very difficult to be simple. And um, yeah. this thing is eliminating any distractions, and you're back to the the person, the activity, and the color. And and yeah, and the the reflection is very clever too, because it seems to me that it's the wall to the man's left that's orange, but the wall on the right of the shot may actually be black or reflective rather than orange. I think you're but, right. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's, 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 it's an a, interesting little sort of visual. Um, I don't know what you'd call it, like an optical illusion. Really, it's clever. Yeah. very clever. Yeah, no, it works really well. well this one. And just like you said, just what he's, how John's framed it up and, and kind yeah. of removed the other elements just to, to yeah. focus in on that, that lone, lone figure is, is the strength of the photo. Yeah. All right. The next so, yeah, one. Another... This is Dan again. So, another Dan. So we had two Dans another... on the, the last yeah. Sydney yeah. workshop. And um, yeah. so Dan, Dan S has just um, jumped in with a comment down on the bottom right. It was an M240, oh, yeah. I think. M240, yeah. So that was, yeah. With his shot, so um, thanks, Dan. Um, this photo here, so this was taken in Manly on the end of at the end of the the first day, and we um, we, we travelled across as a group. It was a bit of a uh, spur spur of the moment um, decision, just to jump on a ferry and, and do something different. We hadn't done that before, so we, as a group, caught the ferry across, and it was one of those. Beautiful Sydney days where the weather was great oh, yeah. and the light was amazing. And um, yeah. yeah, we ended up over in, in Manly for a couple of hours shooting there. And and um, yeah, one of the, the things that um, I also sort of talk about when we're, um, we're out as a group and when I'm presenting my own work in the morning on the first day is a few different approaches. And there's one, there's one particular approach that um, you know, it's not just uh, exclusive to street photography, but I suppose, you know, you use this when you're um, taking travel photos as well. Mm. Uh, but it's the the fishing technique. It's kind of yeah. loosely known as the, the yeah. you, know, you know, stand in a spot, find an interesting wall, and wait for that yeah. that right um, that right person to walk through, or that bird yeah. to fly through, and create a yeah. shadow, or, yeah. or whatever the dog to come through. And and this was one. This was a spot where. Um, yeah, just a nice sort of iconic, you know, the Chico roll um, mm -hmm. backdrop. And I think Dan just, um, we sort of stood there for a few minutes and I think I gave up and kept warm. But Dan Dan hung around and, and um, was able to capture this one. I just like the fact that, um, yeah, he's just sort of captured it without the guy, you know, aware of him. Once again, that's mm -hmm. often the, you know, when you do find these sort of backdrops, it can often be a bit of a, a bit of a curse because if you how you um, how you position yourself can often ruin the photo. And I always yeah. tell people, you know, to to, to get your composition right, um, and then to almost put the camera away and then wait for that person rather than you know standing there with the camera to your eye in position. Yes, yes, um, yes. Because then, as we've all had, you know, we've all had those 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 moments where you do have that backdrop set. And you are waiting for someone and then they see you, they either walk behind you or they yeah, stop yeah. and then it becomes this yeah. sort of awkward thing. Or they, and that's it. 
Yeah. Or yeah. they duck underneath you and they yeah. create this yeah. sort of weird yeah. body shape. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I think it's it's really important to just, you know, have it set, plant your feet and then just, you know, have your camera at your waist. Often, yeah. you know, what I do is just have my camera and, you know, I'm often just looking at it and just just pretending I'm not knowing what I'm doing and then just bringing the yeah. camera to my eye at the last minute. And that, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. that, so yeah, so this photo of Dan's is a, a really good example of that, um, that, that fishing technique that we, we sort of touched. Yeah, so I, the, I call it stakeout on. myself. That's stake my stakeout yeah. thing, yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it's yeah. very productive. But, and the thing is that something to, 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 for those of you who, try, who haven't tried this is you can get your focusing, your exposure, your framing, everything done without the pressure of having yeah. to time the shot. And then the shot itself is purely timing. Everything else is exactly. set. You don't, you don't need autofocus. You don't need auto exposure. You can just set everything, lock it all down, and then it's all yeah. about the timing. And in this particular shot, I'd say the timing was impeccable because the subject's almost at the conver convergence of those lines in the photo in the in, in the mural. But also, it's the right person because he's got the same clothes on as the guy in the mural, which I think it's is awesome. Does. Black shorts and a black yeah. shirt. If only you had a hat on. <laughs> yeah, but you can't hat, have it. Could... <laughs> but it's it's very <laughs> clever. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. I think we had the ferry. I think we were waiting. We were in a bit of a rush to get back to the ferry. So maybe next time, Dan can give it a maybe few next more minutes. Time. Wait for that brown hat to walk through as well. <laughs> but, um, All right. So good one, Dan, Dan B. All right. Then, next one is Dan B again. There we are. Yeah. So this was back at Cabramatta on the on the um, on the morning of the second day, and um, as you can see here, there's that really. You know, that strong morning light coming through. Um, it's a, a same sort of technique. So Dan and I were standing there and, um, you know, we, we found this sort of this backdrop and then it was just a case of him him waiting and, and um, you know, hoping that um, that right person was coming through. And I think there's just little things that, that really help this picture, like the hat mm -hmm. being yeah. the colour yeah. that it is, really just gives it a pop. Um, the light hitting all the fruit in the background, oh, sorry, in the foreground. The um, the distressed awning, I think, really just sort of yes. frames her really well, and just little things as well, like the box where he's um, where Dan's just just you know, click the button, click, click the shutter. Sorry, um, it just it's just I really love where, yeah how the box is kind of on that angle and you know lining up yeah. with the yeah it breaks the up the fruit. You did it, doesn't it? Yeah, and then the um, yeah, I think just really good example of that that fishing technique again or the steak as, as you call it so um yeah. yeah dan dan had a really good weekend so i think yeah that's, um yeah he had two or three and that, i always say to people the, the weekend workshops not about you know it's not about getting you know a handful of shots over the weekend it's it's one or two pictures and if if everyone can kind of walk away with that you know for me i think that's that's what everyone should be aiming for yeah. from a weekend yeah. um yeah I know, you know, for me, it's sort of 10, 10, 15 pitches a year. So if you can get two in a weekend, one or two in a weekend, you're, you're, uh, you're doing pretty well. So Dan definitely did that. He did. And there's a question from Mike here. What percentage of your shots are fishing that, but... intuition, intuition? Yeah, look, it's probably a mix of probably on the spot. You put me on the spot there, Mike. Um, <laughs> I'd say, I'd say it's probably... 15 percent 15 20 percent there's a you know across my bodies of work if i were to add them up it, it's it's certainly a, a technique i use a lot um but often what it can create is a very um sometimes for me the, the, the photos can look a little bit formulaic so i do like to mm -hmm. kind of you know, mix it up and not have too many in a body of work that are yes. sort of of that same technique. But having said that, I'll I'll finish off this uh, this talk later. I'll go downstairs, have a look at my my pin board with all my my current series on there, and it'll probably forty or fifty percent. So you put me on the spot, <laughs> but I reckon it's probably fifteen to twenty percent. So <laughs> fair enough. Fair um, enough. And Mike Reed, Mike Reed's just uh, jumped in with a um with a question wanting to know how long. How long I go fishing for? How long I stay right. in, a, in a spot? Um, Mike, it's probably, you know, it just a lot of it's 
a lot of it is depending on what else is happening so in my life so if i'm driving on my way to a commercial job and and i see something and i i sort of stop the car and stand there for 10 minutes um i start getting a bit conscious of the time so if i've got mm. you know a free afternoon to go shooting and you know no deadlines and um don't have to pick the kids up from school i'll give it you know 20 minutes half an hour sometimes. Um, I think the longest I've stood in one spot was a photo that I took in Bangkok on a hot day. I think it was about 56 minutes and I stood there Ooh. sort of hunched over waiting for someone to scratch their head and um, <laughs> they ended up doing it so it was worth it but it was a, it was a long 56 minutes in the middle of the, the you know, the, the Bangkok Amazing. middle of the day. So yeah, yeah. 10, <laughs> 10, 15 minutes is, is kind of my general yeah. all right okay yep. next one is uh dan s we got yes it's a, a flow of dan's at the moment yeah a few dan's i, I thought i'd uh, get, i'd get all the dan's in through the um the middle part of the the talk yeah this is another photo of dan so just another example of the um the fishing technique and um mm. yeah just a a nice composition um he's waited for that 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 right person to come through or child in this case and yeah. the colors match up um i think it just yeah it's just a nice another good shot from from dan from the weekend so yeah we put that one in yeah i think it would have been very yeah. tempting to shoot that square on which is something i'm always banging on about um but i yeah. think in this case the, the dynamic lines work well particularly with the one way sign that's that's the that's the kicker there yeah. i think from memory it's quite a narrow well it's yeah quite a not, not a very wide lane where i should say yeah, so yeah, from yeah, memory yeah. to get that to get that whole sign in uh, sorry mm. the, the background mural mm. i think dan's had to sort of stand on the um mm. the 45 uh 45 mm. degrees to to, mm. to get it that's worked really well um the, well, i was going to make a comment before about the picture of the market in karamata and, and people talk, go on about dynamic range of cameras all this business but there's a good example of where the shadows you don't want detail that's that but this yeah, one right. this is where dynamic range does work in your favor because you do want at least some detail and that's obviously yeah, sunlit yeah. wall and deep shadow so um it's it's i guess it's better to, to need to have it and not need it than need it and not have it in terms of dynamic that's range. true yeah and it's i mean it's a it's a picture that's got some nice color in it but it's also mm. it would probably work just as well in black and white as opposed to the previous picture of the other of, of dan dan s sorry the other dan um yeah, his dan picture Baker, was purely a, you know all about a color so um yeah i think either this this would have worked well in black and white as well yeah i think um mike's referring to um your english mate who would that be uh mike's put me on the spot there um yeah. my english mate ah that's a good question mike i'll have to have a think about that huge memory cards as well so uh there's, I've got a few English mates, but I'll have to um, have to have to think about that. I don't know which one it could be. Come back to that one. That, that, we'll when you, come when back you, to that. All right. So let's let's go to the title photo of this show, which I, I I picked this one as the one I wanted to use for the title because I found it quite quite wonderful. Um, this is this is where the, it's the design thing and and the irony as well, which I I, I love. So it's Hannah's picture. I think it's very clever. Yeah, look, it's a it's a photo that Hannah, who um, is Greg's daughter, from the two of them did the workshop together, which was which was great. And um, yeah, this this picture of Hannah's, she um, you know, we found this this uh, the shop front with the window with all the you know the mannequins and the wigs and and then you know you sort of we stood there for a few minutes and we were looking at it and you kind of say to yourself. Is anything going to happen? Well, mm. we don't know, but let's let's have a look. And and um, I think I walked off for a while, and then yeah, then later on that day, Hannah showed this picture at the um, to the group, and it was just a yeah, just just stopped everyone in their tracks. It was a real um, just a really great street moment, and just the way the hair, the way she, you know, the way the woman who's standing there's hair just sort of you know comes down in that sort of triangular shape, which mimics yep. some of the um, the shapes in the background of the the mannequins yeah. it just it yes. works on, on yeah. a lot of fronts so it doesn't work think, on a lot of um, levels yeah yeah so um 
I think she was pretty happy with this, and I think there's, a, helps, there's definitely yeah. an ele there's an element of Elliot Erwitt in this picture. I think a very it, Elliot that, Erwitt, that irony it? that I think um, uh, is comes forward. If you look at Elliot Erwitt's Saint Tropez um, beach observation pictures, you'll see yeah. this sort of incongruity and this sort of um, irony playing out a lot. So yeah, well He's, well seen this one. It, and for me, it kind of sums up what, you know, what street photography is all about. You know, we, yeah. we could all stand there for half an hour and get nothing and um, walk away empty handed and, and then, you know, there's just that chance that something like this might happen. So that's, I suppose, one of the, the main reasons I keep, keep shooting on the street is for yeah. the, these opportunities. So, um, yeah, I think Hannah's really nailed it with this one. And I like the fact that there's also this sort of area on the... Um, the top left hand side of the frame that doesn't yeah that sort of breaks it up a bit i think um yeah yeah you know yeah it just it's it just sort of i don't know it just just adds something to it a little bit yeah um, I, I don't know I, I was sort of thinking about that just a minute or so ago and i was thinking would the picture be better without that i mean it's possible yeah. you could use a polarizing filter to reduce it or i don't know but i don't i i think it is what it is i don't think it spoils it at all um, yeah. I just wonder whether it would be a bit overpowering with just even more faces looking out or better. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's... Yeah, I think it's that's the beauty of it, though, isn't it, that the, there is mm. that kind mm. of element of surprise in it. Um, maybe, yeah, I think I think, it's, I think it works. I think it's a, it's a good one. <laughs> Keep as is, as, as Mike just said. He's yes, uh, uh, I mean, with, um, this thing is, though, it is what it is, and it was seen and it shot is. executed like this. It doesn't. I mean, what, what, the reason that um, people like myself or or Jesse or other people can we can sometimes be seen as being very picky, but what the re there's a very good reason for that. It's 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 so that people can learn the, the what ifs and then recognize them when they do crop up, because yeah. it, it's it's and also it's a, an awareness of all the elements in the picture. And whether whether you can do something about it or not is not really the point. It's just being aware of it, and then when you're aware of these things, you can either do something about it or not. So it's it's I've I've always liked to say everything should be done with for a reason or be deliberate or meant, it looks like it's meant to be like that. Um, but then again, yeah. you get happy accidents. So to be picky and fussy means that you you, you might pick up uh, an aspect of a picture by looking carefully that you might have missed before if that makes sense so yeah, yeah. exactly we don't yeah. mean any criticism by it at all it's just observation no no i think it works works with it mm. having it in absolutely all right uh who's up next um sam chung yeah so sam this is a photo that um sam took and um yeah sam was another person in the group that probably hadn't um i don't think he'd shot a lot of street before so it was really new to him as well and mm -hmm. um I think on the, the first day he was following his feet a bit and then um, from memory on, on the second day, this is at Cabramatta again. So all of these, I think I think the last four or five shots I've shown from Cabramatta are all sort of taken mm -hmm. within probably a sort of 250-metre radius of each other. So it's a really um, really good spot we go to. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, this was uh, one of those sort of fishing technique pictures again where you know, we found the interesting red, I think, mm -hmm. the red backdrop. And then, you know, then it's just a case of, of, of waiting and, and hoping mm -hmm. that um, that right person comes through and, and then having it ready and, yep. you know, yep. clicking at the right time, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, timing you know, is perfect. Timing is, one, I mean. is key. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, if having that, that red where it is, the red hat, I think really is what makes this picture what it is. So, um, yeah. Yeah, just just worked really worked. I think Sam was pretty happy with this one. So there's one yeah. one observation I'll make just as a and it's not right, wrong, good or bad. It's mm. just different. Is the is the is the orientation of the person whether the picture is stronger with them facing left or facing right. Um, I've always classically a figure should be moving into the frame, but yeah, you can yeah, also yeah. argue that when a figure is moving out of the frame like this, it adds a certain tension and unpredictability to the picture, which works in its favour. It can go both ways. It could be a little bit too clinical if the figure was facing to the other in the other direction, but it's just a difference to be aware of. Um, and a little bit depends on what you're shooting for. I mean, for um, more documentary advertising, I'd say you probably yeah. go with the classic ideas, but for street stuff, 
I think it's fun to break the conventions and the expectations Absolutely. and, and yeah, and come up with something that's a little edgy, if that's the right word. Yeah. And I think it's, it's just assessing the, you know, the, the photo as it happens rather than kind of. Yeah. Well, you don't get the happen. choice most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Could you just, this would be a better yeah, picture. Exactly. If you want that. No, we're not doing that. That's one thing we, no. we, we never no. do. And I think yeah. it's, um, you know, it, it is what it is. She's walking that way. And I know what you're saying about reading a photo from left to right. I think um, yeah. with certain people that, that, that definitely does work. Um, maybe more sort of photojournalistic ones. But with a street, it's all about, you know, yeah. capturing yeah. that moment. And, and, and it is what it is. It's, it's this is. Yeah. I think the thing is to be aware of the convention and then break yeah. it as opposed to it just being random. I mean, again, yeah. this is kind of random because you've got a 50-50 chance of them going one way or the other, but at yeah, least exactly. be aware of that difference between orientation. I know somebody, again, years ago said to me, if it doesn't matter, some consider flipping the picture. If, it, oh, yeah. if, it's, not, if, it's, not, if it's not supposed to be truthful in some uh, documentary way, if it's just purely for the art of it, and, and there's no yeah. writing in the picture, obviously. It's really interesting how an image flipped 180 degrees left and right can be quite different to what you might yeah. imagine it to be. And that's something I have tinkered with. Um, yeah. I probably would say I never do that, but it's interesting to, yeah. to see yeah. and try it, you know. So, yeah. yeah, it's not something um, I do. I, I, I sort of I hear where you're coming from. For me, yeah. I'd, yeah. you know, the challenge for me would be to um, – maybe wait for her to come back from doing her shopping and then yeah and yeah back yeah, the other way which right. you know yeah. might take two hours but um there's yeah. always that approach as well which yeah you know i often yeah. do myself um so yeah but i think like you said depending on the end result with i think with with certain you know with street photography it's 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 probably you know, we, I personally like to, to keep things as they are in camera, but yes. um, well, that's kind of the whole yeah. point. I mean, you, you've got a genre, and genres have parameters, otherwise, exactly. it's a different genre. And if you, yeah. yeah, if you don't work within those parameters, then you know, you, 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 you there were expectations, if you like, and the ex, one of those expectations is this is a, a moment in time which actually happened in front of you, which happened exactly. That's the key. And, and what happens outside that frame is irrelevant. Or what happens before or after is irrelevant. But that is a little moment and perspective that, that happened. And um, that's yeah. the key. I think. Otherwise, you make it up as you go along, and that's different. I mean, you could Photoshop that hat in easily enough, but then there's yeah. completely pointless activity, I think. Yeah. No, it's all, yeah. All right. To... We should probably move on. This is cool, too. I love this one. Yeah, this so this was... Um... Uh, I can and I can see Catherine's here tonight, which is great. Um, Catherine Catherine Wilson, who took this, she's on Instagram, as you can see. Catherine, it's Catherine nineteen seventy. Um, one of the big things I talk about, you know, in the in the workshops, and it's also been a key feature of the the bookmaking workshop we've done um, recently, is about finding your own style and yeah, and sort of building that that sense of visual consistency throughout a body of work and mm. um and that can be you know achieved in a number of different ways and you know one could be by shooting color for a whole project or black and white mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. shooting verticals or just horizontals or you know panoramics or any there's there's you know several different ways that can be achieved and i think i've got three photos here of catherine's but i'll start with this one what what catherine did over the weekend was she came to the workshop with her, you know, very enthusi very enthusiastic, but also with her own style. And and that um, you can see over the next three pictures is, is really evident. So I think um, this pitch this picture in particular was a was an absolute favourite. And when um, when she showed it to the group at the mm. end on, on on the second day, it was a real yeah, it just it just stopped everyone in their tracks, and we we really mm -hmm. um, we loved it, and it was taken on the Manly ferry, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've come back from Manly. The, the the sun setting, I think, underneath the bridge, we're almost. I think we might have even been the ferry might have been turning to 
um, pull up at, at Turkey La Key. And um, yeah, just I think it's just a, one of those really kind of beautiful street photos that um, it's got that element of mystery to it. There's the beautiful light. Um, mm -hmm. There's lots going on, that silhouetted figure, um, that kind of sort of sort of a kind of multi shadow of herself that's kind of coming through yeah, as well yeah, the the clouds in the cool. background lots going on which um you know draws your eye all around the draws your eyes all around the um the frame which um which which is something that's really wonderful as well so yeah this was a, yeah. a favorite from the weekend and um i wonder if catherine's a, a fan of gustav klimt the painter <laughs> Yeah, I think she is from memory. Um, and I think her next photo that, um, which we might show now. Yeah. You've got this. Uh, the next one. Yes, next okay. One. Uh, just just on yeah. this one, though. Um, yes, oh, yes. Klimt, Klimt did spring to mind. Also, Ernst Haas's work in the 70s. Yeah, on the film, yeah you know what I mean? definitely see Ernst Haas. Yeah, yeah. definitely that, that, yeah. Um, that yeah. saturated colour and just that sort of yeah. Yeah. silhouetted Movement. figure. I think it... Um, yeah. Yeah, just just worked on so many levels to picture. So, um, and um, yeah, and if you follow it, Catherine's work, you know, so there's a real sort of sense of visual consistency running through it. And mm -hmm. This is another photo of Catherine's from um, from Manly, which um, yeah, another photo that works really well. Um, I think if me and you tried to take this, Nick would probably be arrested. But um, Catherine was. <laughs> I don't know what you want to shoot this no problem. Thing, but yeah, it's a tr that is, it's a truth. It is a truth that. And yeah, an it is. Uh, yeah, the world we live in now. But um, <laughs> yeah, so this is just nice. You know, you can see that consistency with the colours that Catherine's looking for, and also the light she's shooting in, and also the processing yeah. that she's putting. Put, yeah. Um, so. Notice that the the little bit of um, tweaking is very yeah. very much, um, worked in this picture. Yeah, definitely. And I think the the next photo as well, which um, which uh, Catherine's once again, which was taken in Manly. Which you want to uh, go to that one now? Yeah, we'll, we'll go to that one now. Okay. Yeah. So this photo, I think, was taken in the the market, and um, you know there was probably another three or four of Catherine's I could have chosen from from the weekend, but I've chosen these, and, and this was. A photo, another photo of that um, was taken in that sort of late afternoon <coughs> sun, fading light, and just that sort of mysterious element, which is the, um, is it a big sheet with a cockatoo printed on it and that little head printed, yeah. the little head above it? Um, yeah, lots lots going on. I think, yeah. I think I think this really works. I almost feel like it needs something else on the right-hand side, just um, a yeah. another little head, another little head sort of popping up behind that white yeah. frame just to kind of yeah. kind of at the moment I feel like it's you know, the left hand side's really working but the the right hand side just needs something else. Yeah. Because that's, um, that's what this, it's all about. There's this thing in um in art theory that someone was explaining to me. I think it was Les Walkling was explaining and if you oh, yeah. divide a picture into four quarters, each of the if you look at a, an old master painting or any of the other each of those four quarters can almost stand on its own as a as a as a subject. This has yeah. got three out of four strong quarters, but the bottom, yeah. like it needs a cat peeping out. It needs or, a cat. Or, again, or this, a, this is or just being fussy, but that it, for, for an image to win on all levels, then each of yeah. those quadrants needs to have something in it. Again, it's not a hard and fast rule. It's just a guideline, but still. So I, I completely agree with you. The top right-hand corner, I'm, I'm quite yeah. happy with that splash of colour. It's that bottom yeah. right hand corner that, that just something. Even just, but, a, hey, you know. even just a foot, like a little foot poking out from underneath the. Yeah, um, something unexpected or something. Yeah. But it's, it's not to be. And, 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 you know, you can get 99 out of 100 successful elements and you just don't, yeah. you have to let that one go. It, it's, it's fine. It's, again, this is just fussy what if, what could have been just what to be aware been. of. Not a criticism. Not a criticism. For me, when that happens, that's the um, that's the fun bit. You know, those pictures where you sometimes don't get it, it makes you hungrier for yeah. Yeah. getting back out but there you, and, you and getting it next picture? time. Sorry, have you ever taken a picture where you thought you hadn't got it, but when you got it back, you actually found that there was the element in there that you were hoping for? Yeah, definitely. And, and, yeah. and yeah. vice versa. There's often been pictures where I thought I had it and, <laughs> you know, it didn't happen. And so that's the... Uh, that's the challenge, but um, challenge. yeah, I think I think the the right hand side that sort of rainbow might be like a rainbow scarf that's hanging. That that's kind of a nice 
another element in the picture, but it, yeah. needs, something, yeah, it just needs something else. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but no, lovely set of pictures. Lovely. Yeah, set so of pictures. Catherine, Catherine did really well. That right. And, uh, so we've got a black and white one coming up here. First black and white one, I think. A bit of black and white. So Alan, yeah. So this was um, Alan, who I think joined us tonight as well, which is which is yes, great. Yes, he's, he's on the list there. Yeah. Alan's a um, a regular at a lot of the the like workshop like Australia workshops and Indeed. we've I've worked worked with him a number of times on on workshops in Melbourne and, and Sydney and um, yeah one of the um, I always sort of give the group a bit of a challenge to um, to try and sort of come up with a picture and often it's for a um, a prize usually a copy of one of my books and this was a challenge that I threw out to the group on the Saturday it was to you know, to find a photo of the Opera House or the bridge, um, such familiar landmarks, but try and shoot it in a different way. And um, ah, okay, good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that, it's always it always gets the competitive juices flowing amongst the group, and um, you get some people that go off, and and that's all they'll shoot for the for the um, for the whole weekend. <laughs> and um, even when you're at Cabra Madre, you're like, no, there's no Opera yeah. House here. <laughs> you got to <laughs> look for something different. So. Um, this was uh, Alan's picture, which, um, yeah, just a lovely uh, sort of silhouetted photo at, at the Opera House, I think, on the, the mm. Saturday evening after we got back those those lovely, um, you know, dark cloud in the background. But the framing with the, the figure where he's been able to capture the um, the lady with her hand and it just, just yeah. off not touching her head, I think just little yeah. minor details like that and yeah. that, that yeah. little gap yeah. between where the woman's head is and that point of the yes. the opera house yes. tiny little details like that that i look that at makes and I, it. when i sit that makes it and that's yeah. and that's what it's, totally. yeah that's the there's that's um, the, um the, an interesting thing with silhouettes um something that i've learned over the years and possibly someone explained it to me um is that you you, you have to be really careful of overlapping it changes yeah. the shape once you've got two so like two trees silhouetted against the sky when they're overlapping it's just a mess but if they yeah. are, yeah, and you, sometimes you have to maneuver yourself very carefully so that the two silhouettes are distinct. And in this case, having the head touching the corner of the shape of the opera house, totally different shape. You don't know, have that separation. And those little details are absolutely critical um, to, yeah. any, well, to all photographs. And the other thing I'd say is um, there's another, I know I'm referring to some photographers of the past, but um, a gentleman in New York called Jay Mysell who's well oh, yeah. worth looking up. He had this expression yeah. that every photograph should have a gesture and that gesture doesn't have to be this kind of gesture. It can be a glint of light or something, but something that just sparkles. Okay. And, but in this case, it is actually a gesture that's absolutely perfectly executed in time. So uh, you'll find that in many of the pictures we've looked at, there is, you can say there's the gesture in that picture, um, yeah. something worth bearing in mind. So yeah, good shot, yeah, Alan. Exactly. Well, well, well seen. Okay. Now, so, so, so now that you've said that there was a theme for getting yeah, a picture of the yeah. house, now I know what why these next pictures are lined up like they are. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you can see that um, following on from yeah the discussion of the theme, this is uh, Greg who had the first photo of the um, yeah. the couple at Manly. This is uh, I think I've got three photos of Greg's coming up that. Um, really showed how Greg kind of took this challenge on and it basically became his thing on the Saturday. And um, he really took it to the extreme, which is something I really enjoy seeing, seeing um, people, I suppose, run with a challenge like this and, and, and make it their thing. And um, I think there's this picture here where he's been able to get both in the same frame, but he's brought another element, which is the fence. And um, yes, yes. yeah, I think it's just a, it's one of those sort of abstract pictures that, you know, it makes you look at it a, a second time and kind of wonder what's going on. And yeah. uh, I think the next photo, which I think kind of, which I've put in, yeah. So that's the another photo of Greg's, obviously. Um, yeah, and this one I think probably it's working, and I think it's it's, it's really well timed with the the couple. I think Absolutely. where it could have been a little bit stronger was just maybe that right hand side where the fence kind of there's that little bit of that gap. Um, could have just come a little bit tighter and just not had that gap and just just framed it with the black. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. On the right. oh, yeah. 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 Just a slither, yeah. I think. It's just, just a simple crop in camera. Yes, yeah, just, just here. Uh, it's just, just to sort of 
You can't really yeah, just, just acting. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. have preferred it if it was just just in a little bit from from there, and mm. even maybe without that that black um, that last black bar. But mm. Um, mm. yeah, and even just yeah, where the um, I think the point of the the sort of the major opera house. Um, the, the, yeah, I've, hang on. We'll we'll go to the next picture. Okay. Yeah, this one. So this is the the, the fence that Greg shot this is through. Clever. That was. Very yes, clever. so that's the um, that's the fence from the first picture. So he's obviously yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, yeah, and it's something it's something I often talk about is to to really explore a scene and not just you know take the first picture. And I think um, I probably mm. should have got put these in different order. I should have probably had this as the the previous photo so you could see the see them side by side. But um, it really shows here that you know Greg's seen the two two landmarks he shot it and then he's noticed the the circles on the um on the uh the fence or the whatever it is the wall and then sort of yeah. framed up that second shot through there so yeah it's really yeah. kind of you know evaluating a scene and in in sort of real time and making decisions mm -hmm. and seeing what works and exploring it and, and getting lost in the moment and um yeah this is know, this is cool it's, with, well. it's very graphic yeah, it's really very, nice. really, very um constructed the, the only thing that i would say is that i can see an edge of a building presumably yeah. here i think I i'd either want to see more of it or less of it i love the texture i love the potential there i'm just wondering whether it needs a little more or a little less it's hard to say it's a, it's a tiny it, I, at first i thought it was like film perforations on like a five by four film yes sort of edge but then i realized well, yeah. maybe maybe there's a bit of bit of a, a visual pun there i don't know but i love the rigidity of the shapes the rectangles and, and then you've got the curve of the opera house i think that's a a very very well seen image actually very very graphic I Most yeah, like, I mean, I yeah you open a book and you see that and it would it immediately is going to capture your attention because you've got to like decode it slightly which is always very satisfying yeah, I'm going to say the exact same thing about that building on the right. I think it's the – is it the toaster building? Is that the one that – Oh, it might be, the, yeah. Is it the toaster apartments? Yeah, I think just that little slither of the um, of the buildings just disrupts it a little bit. But, um, you know, it's a simple crop um, for, for Greg to make or, you know, you make it in camera. And, um, yeah, yeah, even yeah. Just the, that also, the you could potentially tighten this photo up as well by, you know, shooting – cropping out that bar that kind of comes across at the top as well. So oh, I like this that. Kind of I like very, the bar at the top. You I like, like that? that? Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I like this I don't here. Mind it, but the, it's, the circles. I, I like that. The left -hand side. It frames it and yeah. balances the bottom. So it, it just needed... It, that's why I was thinking about including a bit more of that because then it balances this texture down the left-hand side as well. So anyway, we, 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 can, we can go around in circles yeah, with this one. Exactly. There's so many different ways of taking these sorts of pictures. That's, exactly. That's the that's, fun of it. But um, and exactly. of course, in the moment, sometimes you don't. You, I, I, I know I've often looked at a picture and gone, "Oh, if I'd only just thought to do that yeah. particular angle." But at the time, you know, you've got other things on your mind. All right, so you know, we, oh, we're getting carried away here. Let's um, let's move no, on good. to the next. Good. One. This is uh, Hannah again. Another one of Hannah's. Yeah. So this was <laughs> Hannah's photo taken on the on the ferry on the way back, and it was. Um, Yes, I think it was her entry into the um, the landmark challenge, as we called it. Yes. And uh, yeah, I think, yeah. It, yeah, I think this this photo works on a few levels. Uh, I think that you know the colour's really good. There's a nice moment mm -hmm. going on. The reflection of the of the bridge is is working really well. Yep. Uh, little pops of colour. Even the girl sitting on the left hand side with her yes. little uh, strand of hair Agreed. coming down. I quite like. Uh, Agreed. The right hand side which um, kind of annoyed me a little bit, just that little bit of figure on the right-hand side, just um, potentially, yeah, you know, it's something just, uh, the, yeah, just there. So yeah. potentially yeah. It's, it's, a, it's something you, you know, when you're in that moment and you're, you're taking that photo, it's, it's being aware of that and thinking, you know, how is that, that just, great yeah. jumper going to kind of come through into the picture? Is it, is it a case of just stepping in that little bit closer and, and yeah. trying to sort of frame it without that that um, that hard other person? But I think yeah. hard to do exactly. I mean, this is all yeah. in, you know, look, looking back at things in hindsight, how can this yeah. be better? And often it's it's not possible because there's there's someone sitting right there or there's something I, that's stopping I you from doing that. But yeah, 
I think you'll. I think if it wasn't for the fact that this lady is smiling, I think this yeah. corner would be a little bit difficult to deal with. But the fact that she's got this lovely smile, I think that's what you see more than the the shape of the on the corner yeah. of the image, um, because you can't. Faces are a huge attractor, and every and especially a smiling face. It's hard to look away from her, and my eye seems to dot yeah. between her face and the the, the girl here yes my eye tends to do yeah. this and then loop around here so that yeah. holds your eye in the shot well and i think that works so yes good stuff no, don't disagree all right with that. I think I think that tension sorry we're coming go. up to our last picture of our hero series here yes i think the really last one, one was um john henderson another one of john's who um yeah, who who put the uh, the challenge on once again with the the landmark challenge, and um, I think John lives pretty close to the opera house, so it's a, a regular kind of uh, daily okay. challenge for him to to shoot yeah, the yeah. Um, the opera yeah. house and the brew in a different way. But um, I think I, I think he might actually live in the toaster apartment block from memory. So okay, um, nice. I think he's used to shooting it from from sort of you know from out his window. But um, this one I think was taken over at the. Uh, over at the Hyatt, I think it might be a reflection yeah, of the, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, probably, yeah. I like the way this this picture works, and you know, you've got sort of uh, you know good balance throughout the frame. There's a couple yep. of different figures in the foreground, and then the um, yeah, lovely afternoon sun. I think it's it, it works really well in black and white. And, um, yes, yes, yeah. So uh, that was. That was his, uh, his landmark challenge entry. So it was a, I thought it was a good way to kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, good one. That's a good one yeah. to finish. No, I think that's a, a, a cracker. Absolutely. All right. Well, look, it's, uh, it's, well, we've done well actually on our hour. Um, I think there's been a few questions that we haven't got to in the comments. And yeah, it's been a lot of comments. So if anybody's asked a question that we obviously have sort of passed by, you could. Feel free to ask it again. We're quite happy to take some questions for the next five, ten minutes. So if anybody yeah. has anything they'd like to ask Jesse particularly, then uh, we could do that. Otherwise, I think that's a very they're, – they're a credit to you as well, Jesse, because these are sort oh, of inspired by you. your attention and your um, your generosity of sharing your, you know, skills and experience with people. And um, sometimes all it okay. takes is a few little comments to completely transform the way somebody thinks about their – their photography, which is always very rewarding to see when it happens. So, uh, yeah, you, you, you've um, have you has uh, Eric Hansen been to any of your workshops? Yeah, Eric's, I think he has. Yeah, yeah. Eric's, uh, Eric's a good Eric's example doing. of how a little bit of a, a few comments here and there and a bit of experience completely transforms. Um, because um, we he came to Cuba with me, and I don't know if Eric's listening, but he came to Cuba with me and, and found the street ch challenging to say the least. But yeah. He stuck at it to his, in, you know, to his incredible credit, and and then there, it, there was almost a moment, almost a single day you could point you could point to and say it was before and after, and after that yeah. day, yeah. his his um, fear of photographing people, if you could call it that, and his confidence just went through the roof, and 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 he's been producing some phenomenal work since then. So sometimes it just takes a little bit of a a catalyst, and um, going out with other photographers who can give you a few hints can make. A big difference which is why of course we do these workshops so here we go here's a few questions so do you want to feel a couple of minutes good yeah thank paul yeah so um paul's first question about mm. um shooting models so yeah look i think there's a few different um you know depending on who you sort of um uh, you know there's a lot of different opinions on on people's working approaches on the street and my my approach has always been if I'm shooting people that are in 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 the picture that are recognisable, I um, mm. I kind of I avoid interacting with people when I'm on the street. I prefer to to sort of go unnoticed. And obviously, there's times where you are noticed and you can't avoid mm. that. And um, you know, you do end up chatting to people. Maybe it's once the photo is taken. And um, yeah, I think it's it's just being upfront with people. I think having um, Things like Instagram to show people what you're about as a photographer are really are really good tools. In the old days, um, you know, photographers used to carry little photo albums with you know a series of little prints in them. They, they, you know, if someone stopped them on the street, they'd show them. We're lucky now that we've got Instagram and our phones. We can we can quickly mm. um, usually diffuse a situation. I think it's always. Um, 
I, I try not to sort of, you know, if someone does stop me and someone does, you know, object to being photographed, I'll, I'll always sort of, you know, listen to their, what their concern is and, and try and reassure them, you know, what the sort of picture I've taken. It's, it rarely happens though. So I think it's, um, you know, I, I can't really remember the last time it did. I think there was one time in Sydney at the Opera House on one of the workshops where I, I sort of ran into, I got sort of stopped by a guy and um, he wasn't too happy. But, um, you know, often when I'm shooting kind of workers on the street, they'll often, you know, maybe ask me what I'm doing. They're often usually more concerned with being, you know, photographed by a, um, you know, work Mm. work safety officer or something so that's that's usually their reason for stopping me but um, yeah it's generally in terms of sort of having model release forms or anything like that I don't carry them um, I think you know I'd rather my work that I'm shooting is is on the street is usually for personal use in mm. in books and exhibitions and um, yeah you know you don't I've always sort of been in the belief unless you're you know using those photos for real kind of um, marketing purposes advertising um, is the advertising you know, sorry advertising yeah you right. don't you don't right. need it. you don't need it you're, so you're, yeah that's yeah. yeah so that that's yeah. that's sort of how i kind of summarize my approach to to being out on the street um, yeah you're, you're you're perfectly entitled that you're perfectly entitled to take the photographs it's what you yeah. do with the yeah. photographs that starts to then cause and uh, uh, can cause problems and the dividing line for most of us is this idea of advertising a, th a third party so, or yeah. promoting yeah. some concept or making some comment but the picture of that thing or that person in this context that has nothing there's no commentary there there's no there's no um, endorsement there's nothing like that so as long as it's a documentary yeah. editorial style you are absolutely 100 percent entitled to do pictures like that what you can't do yeah. is sell them for advertising without permission so that's that's the line that most people I know draw, and it seems to have held up. I don't think it's ever been tested, actually, in law, but that's the way uh, it seems to be um, understood by the the few le legally minded photographers that I know of. So yeah, if that helps. Now, the, the one time I've used a model release form was for a picture that I took of a um, of an older guy that was, I think, um, shot you know back in you know probably twenty years ago in Melbourne. And I had, uh, I think it was Kodak in America, uh, rang, it, rang up. They saw the photo. They wanted to use it as an advert. Yeah. And the first question was, have you got a model release form? And I of course. Yeah. didn't. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And um, I printed the photo out and I, I drove down to St Kilda where the photo was taken in Melbourne and drove, walked around the streets where I took it looking for this guy who I thought may still be, you know, yeah. hanging out of this mall that I took his portrait in and I tracked him down and um, got him to sign the model release form, um, paid him a hundred bucks and then sent that form off to Kodak in America and New York and I was just waiting for the, the big payment to come through and then I got the email that they'd, um, they'd changed their mind. So that was the, oh, the one no. and only time where I've, I've, oh, I've no. gone and sort of actively uh, it, it, used a model release form on the street for the sort of work I do. So there you go. <laughs> No, it, it, but it's, it's something to bear in mind, though, and again, it depends on the project. The um, the book I did a couple of years ago on the yeah. festivals which I've talked about, um, all, a lot of those people that we photographed were, t were, were photographed deliberately. They're not, you know, with their, with their obviously, they're looking straight at the camera, they're, they're portraits. And we always got details, just an email address, just in case. Yeah. And we did, um, in fact, Tourism Tasmania are using one of the pictures I took in Tasmania, funnily enough, um, for their uh, big advertising campaign. And um, that was really quite well paid, actually. And so yeah. I was able to go to the guy and get permission and pay him properly, you know, good money yeah. to uh, get his permission so everybody's happy. But just because we had the email, um, and it doesn't take too long, particularly with the phone. So uh, if you think exactly. if you think maybe, um, but again, it requires you to contact to, to approach the person, and that's a different dynamic. So it's all very contextual. It, yeah, all it right. is. Yeah, it is. Um, Any more that we've missed here? There was one about um, workers. I think it was seeing a bunch yeah. of workers. Something, what is it, from Mike? Yeah, there's uh, one um, from Jonathan. Uh, where is it? Oh, no, that Jonathan Beckerleg <laughs> wanted to know if there's one piece of advice for street photography, what would it be? Eight second soundbite. Um, 
Yeah, look, there's a, I mean, there's a few, but um, I think the most important one is to just get out there and, and, and shoot yeah, as much as you can. And, and, I knew you were I mean, that's an that. obvious one, but also I think, it's true. I think the most important part within kind of uh, answer is to when you do find a scene that does interest you, don't just think you've got, you know, one, don't just take one picture of it. And I, I see it a lot on the workshops, people you know, taking one shot and walking off and, and yeah. thinking they've got it. And I, I pull them up and I say, get back there and, you know, keep keep shooting. You might, something else might happen. And often for me, it's and it, it's sometimes the third or the fourth angle when I'm looking mm. at, a, at a scene and that's when the picture kind of reveals itself. So mm. I think, um, you know, obviously get out there a lot, shoot it as much as you can, but when you do find something, really try and explore it as much as you can, mm. you know. Good advice. You're Good advice. It's okay. better to have the shot and not use it and then sort of, you know, get back home and think, I should have shot more there. That, what if I'd done that? What if I'd, you know, bent down and angled my body this way and looked up and shot it from yeah. that angle rather than the angle I did? And make all the difference, as you know. Yeah. All right, we'll just do two more questions and then we'll call it an evening. So yeah. the ones I'm going to pick, I would, I don't want to, well, there's there's a question here about photogen, taking photographs of children in public places. Um, again, yeah. you are entitled to do that. You're not entitled to yeah. do whatever you like, but you're also very likely to get some negative reactions from the people around you. So I think you have to judge that as it happens. There's, I don't, I mean, Jesse, do you have any sort of guidelines on that apart yeah, from look, it's, it or not? Yeah, I, I, it's something I avoid. I just I don't want to sort of put myself in that position where mm. I am stopped by someone, and then you're having to sort of yeah talk about oh the light's amazing on the on this wall, and just <laughs> waiting for you know it, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't sort of it never sounds good. So I, I avoid yeah. it. Um, a few people have probably heard this story, but I also I drive a van and I've got grey hair, and you know it's not a good look if you do come across a. An interesting scene, and you're you know you're getting into a van with tinted windows, and you know, you're a forty <laughs> you forty three year old no. in black. It's it's not a good look. So um, no, you know, no, I just avoid it. I avoid it. <laughs> There's also a big difference in pictures of children and pictures with children in them. Um, yeah, incidental. You know, you know, nobody's going around taking pictures of children. You know that that's definitely off. But that picture that we had showed earlier with a little kid with the pink suit, that's a yeah. person wandering through that. That's, you, you still might get picked up on it, but you've got to be prepared yeah. to stand your ground, I reckon, and, say, and you can explain, this is why I took this picture, because look, and it could be anybody's yeah. job. And if somebody has a real beef, well, I don't know. You just have to... Yeah, it's a tricky know. one. You sort of have to assess every every picture yeah. you're taking when you're out there on its on its yeah. sort of merits. Yeah. If, it's, if it doesn't feel right, I I don't I don't pursue Good it. I think advice. in all the work that I've shot, I've only got a couple of shots of you know of of kids in them that are in in books or exhibitions that I've done, and one Fair of them enough. is a photo of my daughter. So that that kind of <laughs> yes, that's yeah, right. That's all right. Last yeah. question: um, How often do you shoot from the hip as opposed to from the viewfinder? So from the hip, that's tiny yeah. Look, I, it's something I did a fair bit early on when I was starting off. I think it's a natural thing to kind of to, um, to do when you're finding your feet as a as a photographer out on the street and you're building up your confidence. Um, it's something I don't do a lot of anymore. Uh, there are sometimes pictures that I'll, I'll use you know, the viewfinder, the the LCD, but um, mm. I generally don't just sort of you know shoot and and hope I've got something and then look at the back of the, the screen and hopefully be surprised by it. It often, it often leads to, you know, crooked horizon lines and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think it also, what it also does is it, 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 it's not a great look. If you're trying to be discreet and you're out on the street, I think it's, it's almost better to, to sort of have your camera at your eye, taking a shot and get caught by someone. And then, it, it, you know, I think it just, just it's a better look rather than sort of standing yeah. there and, and kind of yeah own it so, yeah yeah own it yeah. and yeah, yeah. so I, I, I don't do a lot of it yeah okay good point yeah all right look thank you jesse so much for sharing those no pictures. i mean 
And this is the first time we've actually spoken for an hour without actually showing either of our photographs. So <laughs> it's, a, it's quite know, an interesting it's, format. Yeah, yeah. It's quite so, refreshing um, to talk about other people's work. And no worries. It's actually really quite refreshing um, because yeah, we we'll do, do tend to be focused on. Yeah, we should do that. Well, we'll have some more workshops. We'll get some more people to take yeah. some more great photographs and then we'll we'll share them again. So I should just point out that the next two uh, webinars, so we're I'm trying to do two a month at the moment where possible. The next one is me doing my level best to explain depth of field, which could be interesting because it's a really tricky subject to explain, but tune in for, for me embarrassing myself by stumbling over my words because it is a, a, a very slippery concept to explain objectively. But anyway, we'll see. That's in two weeks. And then two weeks after that, first of sept uh, 15th of September, I've got um, Christian Fletcher from WA in a conversation like this where he'll be talking about having used the SL2 and his, his landscape work for the last, uh, well, since the beginning of last year. So he's been doing some really lovely work over landscape. So that'll be all landscape work. So join me for either of those. And then we've got other ones planned for the future. So once more, Jesse, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, explain uh, all of your uh, advice to everybody. And uh, I will say good night. And with that, I will end the thanks, broadcast. Everyone. Good night, everybody. See ya. Bye.